Welcome to the hottest real estate topics on the planet, keeping you up to date with all the creative ways to buy and sell real estate without bank qualifying, so anyone can build real income starting today. Here is another great show with Dealmaker Bill and Pete the Rookie. All right, here we are on another episode of Flipping Houses for Rookies. Good morning, Peter. Morning, Bill. Morning, everybody, or afternoon, or evening, or dead of night. Whatever time you're listening. Here we are, episode number 327, 327. The, name, the title is Rookie Creative Realist, I'll give that to you again, Rookie Creative Deal Structuring Ideas. Rookie Creative Deal Structuring Ideas. Okay. Here's the description. Are you, are you worried about how to determine the value of an investment property? Or what is the best real estate investment strategy for you? Maybe it's how you do, maybe it's how you, my goodness, I, I got to get my shit together here this morning. Maybe it's how to do, how do you find a profitable investment property? Perhaps you think you can't begin investing in real estate without money. Or you might think you need a realtor license, which costs thousands. Are you worried how you can learn about creative real estate? Or worse, have been studying it for weeks, months, years, maybe decades? And I have not done a deal yet or got lucky and did one or two deals, but the economy changed and now you can't master the consistency of regular monthly income so you can fire your boss or stop making your money with, some, with something you don't like to do. In the next 60 minutes, we plan to dumb down how you can get going. Or be consistent so you can start to get those real estate goals you yearn for all the time. Plus, by the sheer simplicity, you will accidentally get highly motivated and possibly do a deal within the next 30 days just to prove to yourself this whole creative real estate thing is a perfect way to free up your life. There you yeah, go. Mighty powerful words there, Mr. Hawthorne. Yeah. So, okay, so before we get started, there's a link in the chat or the, uh, I always say the chat. It says description here. I always say that wrong. So I got to. No, you get it right. You get it right sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So I, in, in the description, there is a link for you to go grab some materials for today's podcast. It will help you implement what we're talking about. Um, it, very often they're free once in a while there's a paid link in there but I don't think I've done that in very many podcasts so uh, so go grab that make sure you go in there and check it out and <clears throat> if you uh, if you're if you're uh, uh, wherever you're watching us on whatever platform make sure you subscribe to us and make sure you like us or make sure you uh, give us a review so we can get some feedback from you on whether we're doing a good job or a bad job or whether we should keep doing it or stop doing it <laughs> or you're listening at all you're listening at all yeah because this is the airways and we want to make sure you're there out there for real also yeah, we I, record i think it's only me and you i think yeah. it's you and i talk and then you tell me oh we had like twenty-seven thousand downloads less month and I get nervous. <laughs> yeah, exactly. People are listening. Oh, what should I say? Exactly. Is my hair okay? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the other thing is, is uh, every Thursday morning, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we actually record this podcast. We pre-record it. Uh, and when we do, we live stream it on YouTube and, uh, and Facebook. So if you go there at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, you want to be part of our conversation. You can type in uh, the comments or the, uh, the the sections where you can communicate, and it shows up on my screen. And uh, I will, or Peter and I will answer your questions if you have any, as long as they're pertaining to the podcast. If for some reason you want to answer your other questions, there's two ways you can do that. You can go to WhatsApp Messenger, look for Let's Talk Real Estate, 
So go to WhatsApp Messenger and search Let's Talk Real Estate. There's a group there and you can get in there for free. Or if you want to get messages to me directly or have questions for me directly, go to FlippingHousesForRookies.com. Top right hand side is a support link and those come right to me. I check them a couple times a day. Okay, so there you go. There we are. All right. We have a lot to cover today, Peter, so let's dig in deep. Go for it. An option. Hmm. End of podcast. <laughs> I wish. Hmm. <laughs> what is that? As much as I talk about it, I find out that so many people, even my coaching clients sometimes, don't even know what it is. That's weird. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a plain English word, but in uh, different fields... And like real estate, there's some specific points to it. Right. Even if you, and you might not even know what the word means in English to start off with. So how are you starting us out on this one, Bill? So uh, just what you said, uh, there's a word in the English language that not many people know. It's called nomenclature. Mm. And what nomenclature means is, is that a word, one word has multiple definitions in multiple subjects. So yeah. like, like. Peter, you have an option for dinner tonight. Like, oh, in other words, good. you have a choice, right? Or yep. like, in, like in real estate, it would be an option, which I'm going to explain to you how it works, right? Or in the stock market. So depending on the subject, the word mm -hmm. has different meanings. And that's what mm -hmm. nomenclature means, right? <clears throat> so today we're talking about an option in real estate. Actually, we're going to talk about it in the stock market too. Okay. But what is an option? An option is the right to buy something without the obligation to buy something. So you can, yeah. but you don't have to. Yeah. Nice. Hey, that's that's a good one stacked in our favor. I'm using that right now. Yeah. Johnny's here. He's just anonymous today. Uh, okay, anonymous Johnny. <laughs> good. So an option, the definition of an option is the rights to buy something without the obligation to buy something. Mm. Let me give you an example. So in the stock market, let's say you can buy a stock for $400. Sure. And you can trade it, right? So you can buy it and sell it, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't have the $400. What do you do? Well, you surely don't steal it. <laughs> That'd well, be wrong. So let's not do that. Well, you're allowed to get this thing called an option to buy or the rights to buy for say $10. Okay. So this $10 allows you to control the stock and make money with it. Mm. In other words, this $10 gives you the right to buy and sell this stock if you want to, but you're not obligated to buy it or sell it. You only have to do it if you, if it's beneficial to you to do it. Right, because the price could go up or the price could go down. Right. And is there a time limit on those? Uh, well, yeah, when you write them, there is, yeah. Yeah. Figures. Okay. So, can I ask you a question? I see the benefit to somebody buying it. I've never, I've never thought of it, but, like, why would somebody sell it that way? It's the same gamble for them that, ha, Maybe they'll sell it when it's bad and I'll make money. Is there an easy answer for that? No. Well, I would think the reason why they would sell it is, is because, number one, they'll, they'll get a stock sold if it goes mm. up. But number two, if it goes down, they, they get the option consideration money, right? Mm. Yeah, if you have to unload it at some point. Like, I guess I mean, if the time runs out. I mean, we're talking about buying one stock for $10 or controlling one stock for $10. What right. if you had four hundred dollars and you bought forty stocks? Sure. So now you just spent four hundred dollars for for the option money. Mm-hmm. And if you don't buy it, the guy that owns the stock just made four hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. <clears throat> so here's an example: stock is trading today at four hundred dollars per share. Yep. You pay ten dollars to have the rights to control it for four hundred dollars per share. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, the stock inc increases to $460. You sell it and make a $50 profit. Right. 
you make fifty dollars because you bought for four hundred, you sold for four sixty, you made a sixty dollar profit, but you paid ten dollars for the option. Sure. So you made a a net profit of fifty dollars. But if the stock goes down to three hundred fifty dollars tomorrow, you're not obligated to buy the stock. All to, all that would to happen sell. to sell. Yeah, no, to buy. Because you have to buy the stock to sell it, right? Oh, like so it's an option. So, you, oh, okay, I get it. You buy then sell. Yeah, I got you. Okay. So, so you don't have you're not obligated to buy the stock, or yep. or, or do anything with the stock. Yep. Right. All that would happen is is you would have to lose your you would lose your ten dollar fee for controlling it during the time period that you control it. Right. So the only risk you have is a ten dollar fee. Mm-hmm. Right. Now the most magical, most amazing, most incredible thing on planet Earth is the same pro the same procedure works in real estate. Mm. You find a seller who gives you the right to buy, say for ten dollars or a hundred dollars. Other than the hundred dollars, there's no money down, no risk except the hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. No credit checks, no capital. None of that's needed. And because you have an option agreement with your seller, this agreement actually, by law, gives you a minute equity share. Sure. Minute, what does minute mean? Very, very small. Very little. Not a controlling share, so you can't take the you can't take the property away from somebody, mm-hmm. right? But it gives you a very, a very minute equity share. Sure. But it's just enough. For you to say, I'm part owner in this property. Because the law doesn't say you have to have a certain percentage. Mm -hmm. It just says that you have to have a percentage. So it could be a half of 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 a percent. Sure, sure. Right, Like ridiculously low, right? Mm -hmm. But because because you are an equity share partner in this property, you now don't need a license because you're selling it because you own it. Or yeah. You have an equity share, so you don't you don't need a license. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that that's how that makes. So does that make sense? How that works, the option sure. agreement. Sure, I mean you would think in this world people can do what they want, but no, there's laws. Don't do this. Don't do that. Laws get passed. You have to be a realtor and all that stuff. But this is a way that somebody could help someone else sell a property because you just can't come along and sell something for somebody. Right. Somehow you're just not allowed to do things. Don't do this and don't do that. But this gives you that right, so that's good. So the interesting thing to this story, to divert for one moment, is any realtor can go into their multiple listing service, we call it the MLS, and they can find these options and use them. They're oh, in, like they're, they're in the, their system. The, pap- the paperwork for that. Yeah, they're in their system. Okay, yeah. Hmm. Right? Yeah. And then they ca- they call us alternative motions. I mean, alternative solutions. Yeah. So why doesn't a realtor do that? I never thought of it. How how would that even work for them? Could they take an option on a property? Yep. As a realtor or as a as a, just a person? Either or, as long as they huh. disclose they're a realtor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm going to go over that in a minute. I'm going to tell you the reason why they would do it. But the point is, is the reason why they don't do it is because the realtor system is rigged incorrectly. Mm. Not realtors, realtor system. Yeah. And that is that their commission is paid on the amount of money in the bank at the closing. Mm. So they get 5% or 6% of the amount of money that hits the closing right so so I, I have had this happen to me in the past one of my upsets with the realtor if you would say that and it's not technically an upset it's just that it rubs me the wrong way so I sell a property say for two hundred and two hundred thousand dollars right right so the seller signs a contract me being the seller would sign a contract for two hundred thousand dollars sure correct? Mm. 
they go doing an inspection and all of a sudden there's twenty thousand dollars worth of repairs yep and i agree to the twenty thousand dollars worth of repairs i wouldn't do that but i'm just saying <laughs> from for a number yeah. right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so how much am i getting at the closing table well 180 is coming in well 200 is coming in but i got to replace the 20 i spent so it's really 180 right yeah but the realtor got paid on 200. Yeah. So so here's my upset. Who negotiated the repairs? Who spoke to the buyer and the buyer's side about the repairs? Oh, well, the realtor did that. The realtor allowed it to go down that much. Right. Now, I'm not saying I'm not saying that they're bad or anything like that, but the point is is that it's costing me money if they're not if they're not competent. If they well, don't they know how to negotiate to yeah, but they have nothing to lose if it goes right. down. Right. That's the thing. See that you know, anytime you have a business or any activity, everyone should have skin in the game. Or if something changes, it should affect you if you're making decisions, because right. you wouldn't care otherwise. Even even subliminally, it's not on purpose or meanly. It's like, eh, I got nothing to lose. So the realtors I work with, we had that conversation because I would only pay commission on the 180. And you can arrange that just because you could put you it in the contract. Any, anything you want, yeah. Yeah, take it. I mean, I use I use I don't use realtors a lot anymore. I mean, I did during COVID because I sold a bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. right? And I have a guy that was in part of my coaching group, and he came through my system, and then decided to go realtor. And you know, I don't know. You know, these guys make two, three, four hundred thousand dollars a year. I know some make more than a half a million dollars a year selling property. You know, they're hustlers. They're doing you know thirty, forty, fifty deals a year. They have good. Mm -hmm. They're high producers, so they have good uh, incentives with their brokers. One, the guy that I'm talking about just became his own broker, so he doesn't have to split commissions. You know, um, that's all good until now. When mm. the market when the market changes, it's good when it's a seller's market. It's not so yeah. good when it's a buyer's market. Yeah, in just one city in our area, instead of having 60 to 100 houses for sale on the MLS, it's about 25. Yep. So think if that's your job, your your um, your sales pool went from 100 to 25. Right. That ain't good. Right. All right, so, so we buy this option for, which by the way, this option agreement, I think I covered this in a minute, but uh, the option agreement, says you have to use legal tender to make it authentic. Mm -hmm. Legal tender means paper money. Mm -hmm. So you could use a dollar. Often, I mean, in the past, I used to use $10. I use $100. Here's the reason why. It's, it's, it's experience talking right now, okay? Mm -hmm. I like to give a check these days. So the check can be negotiated meaning that it could be cashed and the stamp and the and the bank puts a stamp on the back of the check saying that the person that you wrote the check to got their money. Yep. Right? So I like to use a check and make sure it gets negotiated. So let me ask you Peter, if I wrote you a check for $10, how fast are you going to run to the bank and cash it? Oh, I see. Yeah, my I actually sent a guy I probably 20 bucks and he never he never cashed it, I don't think. Yeah. So I see what you mean. So, so the, that gives them incentive to go to the bank and negotiate it and cash it so you have evidence that they got the money in case anybody right in case you know. there's ever a problem which there isn't yeah. but just in you know just in case there's a problem he he or she negotiated the check which consummated the option agreement yeah a lot of people don't think about that because it's not it's not a big issue but you only need it to be one issue cuz i promise you it will be on that deal that you're making 9 million dollars on <laughs> yeah, and you got hey, a lot, a lot riding on it. Well, you know, it's one of those things. Like, if you cross all your T's and dot all your I's, nothing happens. If you miss one, then something could happen. You know, just bad karma, maybe. Exactly. So, I mean, right. you got yourself protected. You got nothing to lose that way. Why not? So, here's a few example deals of how we would do this. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you promise to set, you promise to pay a seller with an option agreement. Mm-hmm. You give the seller your ten dollars, or like like I said, like we do, we give them a hundred dollars because it's more professional, right? And like I said, the law says that it has to be legal tender, which is paper money, right? And it makes things nice and legal when you do that. That's so funny. You couldn't give them like a uh, a gold coin, huh? Nope. 
That's funny. Yeah. That's a whole other story. That's a, that's the story of the, the the creature from Jekyll Island. Oh, really? Yeah. So yeah, that's a, <laughs> it yeah, goes that goes that deep. We'll stay out of that one today, right? Yeah, exactly. Hey, yeah, we so. haven't done that one in a year or two. Can we do that one day? Because it's been yeah. a while. Yeah, it's a great exactly. little story. Yeah. All right. So now, if you find a buyer that's that's willing to pay two hundred and twenty grand for the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, so you you have an option agreement for two hundred. You sold it for two twenty to your buyer. Right. You would use your buyer's money to pay the seller the two hundred thousand. Yep. And keep the twenty grand profit, just like the stock market example. Yep. Now here's the cool thing. Like I said before, if the price of the of the house goes down to one eighty, mm. you don't have to buy it. Mm. You just you just you just let your ten dollars or a hundred dollars go away. It's your option fee. The only thing you risked was the ten dollars or a hundred dollars. Yep. So how's there any risk? So technically I'm gonna get into this later, but technically are we buying and selling houses? Not really. It's it's the paperwork that goes along with it. Right. Because I mean, technically, you you sell the option paperwork to the buyer, don't you? Right. So Rockefeller once said, I think it was. Uh, I just went blank. Nelson Rockefeller mm. once said. Was that, it Nelson or the original John D? No, it was Nelson. It was Nelson? Oh, he goes yeah. back away. <clears throat> he was John D's, I think, son. Our grandson, well, it's a family, so yeah, yeah, yeah they're all in. Cool. He said the way you create wealth and or keep wealth is to own nothing and control everything. Yeah, because when you control it, if the money goes up, you get to keep it. If the money goes down, you don't own it. You don't have to suffer the consequences. So let me interpret that because nobody's ever asked me this question. Like, let me interpret that in my mm. in my in my words on Bill's sure. planet. So here's what happens. You pay attention to the assets and control the assets, not the liability. That's what that well, saying says. You really have no liability if you're not the owner. Right. So if and, you sign if you sign an option agreement and you can control this property, you're controlling the asset. You have no liability. There's no downside. There's no there's no yeah. There's no, I mean, other than your, and your downside, actually, I shouldn't say that. There is a downside, your $100. Mm. But it's a controllable, predictable, willing to liability. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, you know what, you, well, you know what you're going to lose, 100 bucks. Yeah, I'll do it. So my question to my listeners are, what's your problem? <laughs> I mean... I'm going through this now because I'm one of the founders of Creative REI Reply, as you know. We partnered with REI Reply, yep. Dave, David and Susan, and Sean and I, who's my other partner, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and for the first time in my career, I am actually extremely blown away. I, I thought I've seen everything in real estate until now, right? And the thing is, is I have coaching clients I've had for years that just didn't make phone calls. They didn't do anything. And now mm -hmm. that they're in the creative REI replay system, all of a sudden they're bringing me deals on the coaching calls. They're like doing things because we made it so easy. Yep. It's push button. I mean, not the business, but getting the leads. I mean, we're, we're putting leads in their accounts every day. Yep. And God bless Sean. Sometimes, sometimes I wanna, sometimes I wanna hit him, because he aggravates me. But some, sometimes I wanna hug him because he's amazing. I mean, it's, yep. we we have that love hate relationship, right? So, so the point that I'm making is, is that we, meaning me with the ideas and him with the, with the brain power of you know technical stuff. Yeah, the software, the computers. He's good at all that stuff. We have just created. A calculator so when you're on the phone with your seller 
you put in five or six numbers and it tells you which deal to do. Then when you click on the button that brings the deal up, you know, my seven deals, it brings the deal up. On the left side of the page is your numbers. On the right side of the page is a checklist of all the things you got to go over with the seller before they can do the deal. My intention is to expand my business with virtual assistants to start doing closing. I've been, you know, as well as I have been for 20 years, I've been trying to train yeah. acquisition managers. It's the hardest thing in the world to do because there seems like there's so many variants or I'll spend time to train them, you know, a year, sometimes two years, and then they feel like they can go do it themselves and they go start their own business. Yep. Right. So I don't know why I'm bringing this up right now, but my point is, is that what I guess my point is, is that why wouldn't you do this, this option agreement? Why wouldn't you do this? Especially the last couple of years. I mean, I know you're doing one right now mm -hmm. and, and, and it's not going so well mm -hmm. because one of the things that we missed is, is that when you have an option agreement with somebody to sell, you have to have a unique selling proposition that yep. the realtor doesn't have. And a unique selling proposition in this particular case is to be at a lower price than the realtor. Mm -hmm. Which is easy to do with your seller because your seller is going to pay 12 to 15% in closing costs. So if they give you that much of a discount, because that's how much they're going to get if they sell with a realtor. Yeah. Right? So like on a $200,000 house, if you were to go sell for, let's say, uh, let's say a $200,000 house, they give you an option for one hundred eighty. Mm-hmm. You could put it on the market for one hundred eighty-five thousand dollars, right. make five grand, and be way ahead. That's right. The realtor is going to put it on for two hundred, so you're you're fifteen thousand dollars below market value for the same house, and you're going to do all the same work the realtor can do. Mm -hmm. So that's your unique selling proposition: is to make sure you get the make sure that you explain to your seller the closing cost, and they know how much the closing costs are, and that. Oh, yeah, by the way, most often the realtors, which is changing now because the market's changing, but most often a realtor will want uh, six months. We sign these options for no longer than 30, uh, 90 days. Yep. Very often we get them done in 30 days. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. But, and the last thing I want to say about options, which I'm on a diversion right now, is probably the most foolish thing that I can absolutely say in my career. Hmm. I, I, I know that you know, and I know that our listeners know, because 327 podcasts, I've been trying to convince people hmm. to go do this. And here's my punchline. If I were to check out today, which God God bless me because I'm not ready to do that, so I'm not doing that. But if I were to check out today, here would be my last words on the podcast. <laughs> yes. If you're talking to a seller and you're not sure, the only way to make money, the only way to do this is to know how much you can sell for. Right. And then just buy it or control it for less money than that. So if you know you can get $200,000 and you know you can get $1,500 a month, mm -hmm. then you just need to negotiate with your seller for less than $200,000 and less than $1,500 a month. And mm -hmm. if you can't do that, then you just do what we call a slot deal, a sandwich lease option transfer, and you just buy the option and sell it. Right? But the point is, is if you know how to buy, if you know how much you can sell something, it's a lot easier to negotiate how much you can buy it for. It's just that simple. Well, you know, that goes with anything. You know, you could be selling pencils, as example right. I like to use. Right. Uh, I've sold guitars. I've sold cars. Like, used to sell cars. I'd sold a couple here and there just for the hell of it. And it's not that complicated. You can find out what something's worth, buy it for less, and sell it. Um, in, in the case of our current market right now, has gone from a seller's market to not really a seller's market. So in a seller's market, unique proposition is, I have a house, and okay. you, could, you could have a, a shack, and it's okay, gone. so stop right there, because that's my exact point. So there are a lot of listeners right now that are going to say, well, how do I know how much I can sell it for? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. If you're new, you don't know. And if you, and if you underestimate it and be too conservative, you won't make a deal. Mm -hmm. So here's my parting words, if I were to use them. Yeah. What, what, what the heck is going on in your head? 
<laughs> Think of what I'm telling you. What? You could sign, which Sean does this, my other uh -huh. partner. You can uh -huh. sign an option agreement with somebody. If you're not sure of if you can sell this property, uh -huh. you can say to the seller, look, I'm not sure. I think your numbers are a little bit strong, but I'm not your buyer, so I'm not sure. So how about we do this? We sign an option agreement for 30 days. Mm -hmm. Let me bring the house to the market. AKA, put it on Facebook Marketplace, put it on Zillow rental section, and get people to come tell you what they're willing to pay. Yeah. The price, the down payment, and the monthly payment. Yep. You're surveying the public that want to buy that house. So if you if if your seller is saying I want two hundred thousand, and and they want fifteen hundred a month, and you go out and you come back with well I show I had thirty people that were interested or three hundred people that were interested. Mm -hmm. Here are the offers that I'm I'm getting. Yeah. So now you know how much you can sell the house for. So now you go back to your buyer. I mean, sorry, your seller, and you say to them, hey. The highest number I have is one hundred ninety thousand. I can't pay two hundred. You're, you're all of a sudden you're much more confident, and your conversation with that seller completely mm. changes. And that works when you're not only just doing a straight option deal, but say you want to do other deals like uh, a lease option, or you want to take the mortgage over. And that's you know you're making a commitment to pay that every month, and right. you're not sure. Now you do like because I was wondering because I heard you've been doing this. So I'm thinking I hadn't gone through one of these deals with you and Sean to see how it actually worked out. But you want to do a more serious type of deal, you can test it this way and then come up with the correct numbers for a subject too. I can't pay that much rent, or I can pay. You know, you can figure that out in just those thirty days. Or, or everybody right? says it's worth 190, but they 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 say that the deck's got to be fixed, and that's 10 grand. Or you got to replace the roof. I would buy it, but the roof is bad. Or they come up with things that you didn't know about, like the furnace is like broken and it's and it's not running, and you didn't know that. Or there's leaks in the house. Whatever, right? Yeah. The point is, is yeah. that you're not going to get trapped into a deal if you do it this way. Right. That's that's really smart because you know you're talking about just straight option. That's one thing. You don't have you know you have no big concern. But if you buy it a different way. Like taking over payments or something, you're more you're committed then. Right. And this is a way to test it before you even do that. That's be clever. I like my my that. point my point is is that that it's not even all that. All that what you said is one thousand percent correct. My point is is that if you if you're if you're if you're being a coward, or you're trying to you're being ultra conservative, which is a higher harmonic of fear, by the way. Yep. Right. So if you're being ultra conservative and you're pretending like you're not afraid, but you are, you're being like, you're making sure everything works before you do it. This is the way to do it. Yeah. So you sign an option agreement. So, so as we go through the rest of this podcast, I want you to understand this is the power of the option. The power of the option is not the option. It's how you use it. It's mm. the implementation, the execution of how you use it. And we're going to talk about a couple more of those examples. Like, for example, mm -hmm. putting a lease attached to it. Right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so it's it's the ability to control this property so you feel better. I mean, think about this. You're worried about negotiating? You're worried about what to say to the seller? Mm. Just say to the seller, well, give me the property for 90 days and let me go put it on the market and let's see what everybody says. And then I'll come back and I'll give you a real numbers. Yeah. Give them $100 or $10 or whatever you're going to give them and do it. You're not sure of a neighborhood. You're you're, you're doing out of state. Then then go. You know go. Yeah, go especially do. out of state. You're not even. There. So, what do you think would be the uh, the a good time window? Thirty days up to ninety. Yeah, yeah. Well, thirty days. It depends on your timeline. But Sean does it in thirty days because he all and Sean does it because we're doing it in Ohio. And and <laughs> I can't believe he did this, but he did it. Right. Wow. Uh, he actually has the owner of the property show the property. If they want to sell it. Right. So, so anyway, so we diverted there, but let's go back to the option. So if you, if you have an option for 200, you sell for 220, you get the 20 grand. Mm -hmm. Right. So here's the cool thing. The price of the house 
if it goes down to 180, you don't have to buy the property or take the property. You just lose your option fee. Right. Right. All right. Now let's make this exciting. <laughs> okay. okay. So right I now. I thought that was pretty good as it was. <laughs> yeah. Well, so let's talk about. So here's the other thing. So it took me literally, I don't know how many years, 15 years, 18 years to learn this. A long time. A long time. And it's so simple. That's why I couldn't learn it. Because mm -hmm. it was under my nose and I didn't know it. I couldn't see it. The absolute positive stake in the ground to know whether a deal is good or bad. There's only one, one formula that does that. We talk about it all the time. So when I'm looking, when I, when you used to, and other coaching students used to give me prospect suspect forms, because that's what we used back in the day, and I had all the information on one piece of paper, mm -hmm. I would look at it and here were the three questions I would ask. Hmm. How do I get money now? Mm. How do I get money monthly? And how do I get money later? If I could get all three of those in a deal, like buy on a subject two, and sell on a lease option, it was what we call, what Ron LeGrand calls golden geese that mm -hmm. lay golden eggs. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. So that's, that's, the, that's the terminator right there. That's, the, that's the, the formula that I use. So when I'm looking at a deal, which by the way, we've talked about this in other podcasts, money now, money monthly, money later. Money now, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, let me see if I wrote this down here. Money now is chunks of dough. It's the deposit, the option consideration deposit you're going to get from your buyer. Right. That's spendable cash. Those. That's the way you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna build reserves. That's the way you're gonna you know pay down debt. That's the way you're gonna like buy cars and go on vacations. Mm -hmm. But it's also your capital to do other types of deals. Right. Right. If you need some repairs, if you want to do some renovating, there's your capital. Yeah. Money monthly is the difference between what you're paying and what you're collecting, mm -hmm. right? So that's the money that's going to get you to fire your boss and give you your freedom and get you your time back, right? Yep. So like if you need if you need six thousand dollars, I mean if you need four thousand dollars a month to live, which is fifty thousand dollars a year, okay? Well, you should figure out how to get six thousand dollars. You want two thousand dollars to handle all the all the the mishaps, you know, the not payers and the broken houses and the reserves and all that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. you make six thousand, right? And you need four thousand. Yep. So some months you put two thousand in a bank, some months you spend that money to like fix a furnace. Mm -hmm. Right? So here's a magical thing. If you average five hundred dollars a deal, which is very low for us, and the reason why is because of our down payment assistance program, which I'm not gonna go over right now, but we average on an, on a two hundred thousand dollar house. We average about I average about eight or nine hundred, sometimes eleven hundred dollars a month. It's amazing, right? Profit, 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 cash per, flow, profit per month, per month. Yeah, not but if right. you average if you average five properties, I'm sorry, five hundred dollars per property. Mm -hmm. You need twelve properties to retire. So the question is, is how long is it going to take you to get those twelve properties? That's right, right. So this this takes away the whole. You know, is this real? Isn't this real? Right? So money now, money monthly, money later. Oh, I'm sorry. Money later, I was doing money. So money monthly is the cash flow, and that's what's yeah. going to get you free. Money yeah. later is your retire early money. That's your wealth. You start getting thirty to $100,000 in equity in a property, and, and that will build your wealth. Yep. Right? So... Uh, obviously, we talk about that a lot. Uh, it will generate enough income to fire your boss and retire early. Mm -hmm. So here's the point. If you're doing a sandwich lease option transfer, there's no equity in the house or the seller's not willing to give you equity like a free and clear person that wants full asking price and won't do payments, you can sell and make five or ten grand or whatever you're going to make as a, as a transaction uh Engineer, no, as a transaction fee. Although it's not a fee, it's kind of illegal to say that. But, oh. but you know, as a transaction uh, payment, 
Mm -hmm. right? If you're only making money now, then you don't spend a lot of time on it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but if you have a subject to deal where you're, you're paying, you know, $150,000 for a $200,000 house mm -hmm. and you can make money now, money monthly, money later, and it's the golden goose egg, you can afford to spend a lot more time on that deal than on the slot deal. Yeah, because the slot deal will be gone in a month or two <clears> or three. The uh, the other, you'll, you'll be there for a few years. You're in it. Well, you'll get you'll get ten grand now. Yeah. <clears throat> you'll get your five hundred to nine hundred dollars a month positive cash flow, mm -hmm. and you'll get probably sixty or seventy thousand dollars in equity in the back end. Yep. So you can afford to spend time. So this money now, money monthly, money later concept is a lot more profound than what we make it. Right. The point is, is that when you're doing deals, that's what you want to look at. So the reason why I bring that up is because what we do is we take these option agreements and we attach them to leases, like I said earlier. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so one, once we connect the option to leases, our buyer pays all the expenses while waiting to execute the option to buy and get qualified for a new loan. Mm -hmm. Think of this. The realtor doesn't pay all the expenses for the seller when they're trying to sell. Nope. So why are you nervous about talking to a seller about this? Mm. Right? Plus, these agreements can range from 90 days, which is common. They can range from one day if you want, but 90 days, right? And that's usually just, a, just an option without a lease. To 100 years if you want. Mm. I mean, most people listening to me right now don't know this. But there are multiple properties that you probably drive by every day that have 100-year leases on them. 100-year options and leases. For example, McDonald's. They don't buy the land often. They just lease the land for 100 years and they put their their building on top of it and that's it. They don't own the land. So a business would do that because they plan on being there as long as possible. I mean, it sounds 100 years. Who lives that long? So it's not a personal thing. Right. But a business would do that. Right. And I'm not saying McDonald's does that, but there's a lot of but, businesses yeah. that do do that. A lot of factories, you yeah. know, they'll come in and they'll put a building up. They'll amortize the building over the course of 27 years so they get their money back. And they and they could, so they don't have to. The reason why they would do that is they don't have to come up with the million, two million, five million dollars that the property's worth, and they could just rent it. Yeah. So hundred year leases and hundred year options are not. They've been around for a long time. <laughs> so, the cool thing about this is when we write these leases, they're not technically leases. So I had this conversation the other day in one of our support calls for Creative REI Replay, because we do them once a week when you get involved with that system, right? And I explained to somebody this. I think I did it here once too before. So listen to what I'm going to tell you, because this is very, 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 very profound. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't sound it when I say it. Viewpoint. Viewpoint is where you're looking at something. So you and I could sit at a table mm -hmm. across from one another with a bottle of water in the middle of it. We're both looking at a bottle of water, but you see something different than I do because there's a label on it. Sure. So that's a point of view. Your point of view is different than mine. Mm -hmm. Now, there's, there's commonalities between them, but it's very specific to where you are sitting. Sure. Okay. So viewpoint. Mm -hmm. So a realtor can do a lease with an option. We can do a lease with an option. Mm -hmm. the, the realtor will put the lease first, then a by the way on the option. So the, the realtor will go in because what are they getting paid on? They're getting paid one month's rent to lease this place. Right. If they're doing okay, I got you. When, so they do the yeah. so they do the lease first, and then a by the way, yeah, we'll give you an option to sell, if they mm. think about it. Most of them don't. Mm. We have a different viewpoint. We do the option first. You're buying this property, and oh yeah, here's a lease until you get approved. Hmm. It's a different viewpoint. 
Yep. So by doing that, what happens is, is when you're a realtor and you're leasing first and then adding the option, it puts you into the landlord mentality. When we do it, we do option first and then rent. It puts us in the owner mentality. Right. And that's a big difference when you have somebody in a house thinking, this is my house. I'm taking care <clears throat> of it instead I mean, of this is my rental car. I don't care. Right. So that's what we talk about is, is if you were to rent a car, you're not going to wash it. You're not going to you know, put air in the tires unless you have to. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to vacuum it. You're not going to do a tune up. You're not going to do brakes. None of that. You're just renting it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but if you own it, you'll do all that stuff. You'll take care of the car because you want it to last longer. Unless you're a girl. <clears throat> oh, here we go. I don't start with that. <clears throat> I know well, about your wife. Should, the, <clears throat> the husband. We're going on a trip, three days, you know, to see where they, hey, you want to clean the car up? He says, why? He says, oh, if you want it, you can. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll do it. Just yeah. to clean it up a little bit so you hit the road. Because when you get back, you know, it's going to be a disaster by the time you get home. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but that, you know, the point is when somebody buys a house on an option, they think it's theirs and they will take care of it. It's a different viewpoint. It's just a different way to look at it. Yeah. Right? But, I mean, if they're excited. I mean, I've heard people on the phone with you on some of your calls I'm calling about the house you have. It's it's rent to own or how does that work? Oh, you can blah, blah, blah. You can lease the house for a while, then buy it. And the guy goes, honey, you're not going to believe this. We don't have to rent anymore. They're freaking out on the phone. We can buy this house. What do you mean we can buy that? We rent it for a while, then we buy it later. Like, what? And then they'll take care of it because they care. It's like a golden opportunity for people. By the way, the first time I heard you said you say in one of your early lectures I attended was uh, you take this two hundred thousand dollar house and sell it for two twenty. I thought who's stupid enough to do that? So in case anybody's stuck on that, these people who buy on this uh, lease option system are thrilled to do that because it's that or nothing. They won't get a house otherwise. They'll be renting and renting and renting and renting forever. So they just saved a lot of money yeah. by overpaying it but a it's, bit. It's also, first of all, they're going to find you, you're a needle in a haystack. But more importantly, it's just, it's money versus time. So yeah. if you were to buy my computer today for $1,000, give me $1,000 in cash, you gave me $1,000. Yeah. If you were to buy my computer today for $1,000 and swipe your credit card and make 24 payments, you're paying more than $1,000. Yeah. And that's how we deal with the houses. It's the American way. I didn't make it up. I just use no. it. No. And from their viewpoint, they're also saving all the money that they won't have to rent forever. They'll finally own something. They're paying so, a little more to save a lot. So let's put the cap on this, okay? Yeah. So when we do this, this, this lease option, the way we're talking about, and we make our buyer an owner, mm -hmm. technically us or whoever is putting the money in is giving them an intermediate loan until they can get approved. Which, by the way, better than 80% of people looking for a house. Mm don't qualify for a bank loan. So there's a lot of people that want these houses that, that yeah. there's more of them than people that are actually buying houses, right? Mm -hmm. But now watch this. When we do this this way, we're now putting our seller, who's usually letting us borrow the money by making payments, mm -hmm. right? We're making them the banker, right? They're in the banker position. Yep. So here's my question. When was the last time you called your lender and asked them to fix your toilet? You know, I did last week. They hung up the phone on me. Yeah, there you go. All right. All right. So now let's do some math on these lease op on this lease option concept. Hey, Bill, I have a suggestion. Uh -huh. I think we have to rename lease option. Okay. Option lease. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. Peter's humor. The dog didn't That's like true, it. He though. barked in the background. Or he I thought it was funny, one or the other, and he's laughing. Yeah. Got the door closed, the drapes closed, they got the music playing in the other room. <laughs> the seller gives you an option to buy for two hundred grand. Mm-hmm. And you agree to pay the monthly expenses of seventeen hundred per month. Right. But it's worth two hundred and seventeen hundred a month. There's no profit, there's no margin there for you. Mm. But they owe that much, so they're not going to go lower. Right. How do you make money now? Right. You could sell the house, like we were just talking about, for two ten, mm -hmm. and seventeen hundred a month with a minimum of a two year lease with an option to purchase. Yep. Which means you bought the option rights to buy for a hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. 
from your seller with a maximum of two years to pay off the seller. Yep. Your buyer will give you, I'm sorry, your buyer will give you 10 grand deposit mm -hmm. and still owe the seller 200,000. So we bought for two hundred. We sold for two ten. The buyer gives us ten thousand dollars for an option consideration deposit mm -hmm. that we only paid a hundred for, mm -hmm. and they still owe two hundred. The result: you promised your seller two hundred grand. Your buyer paid you two ten and gave you ten grand down. Mm -hmm. So your profit is the ten grand now. Yeah. Within the next 30 days, if you do as we talk about today. That's right. This has been used, I think Joe, uh, was it? Joe McCall did a good job with this. Mm -hmm. He called it flipping lease options or wholesaling lease options. Right. All right. So once you learn this concept, why would you ever want to do a wholesale deal? You know, wholesale deals are ugly houses. These are pretty houses. Mm. Okay. So this is called flipping uh, flipping lease options for huge profits or on Bill's Planet, it's called a sandwich lease option transfer or a slot deal. Yep. Right. So technically, what did we do? We bought a piece of paper for $100, the option agreement. We found a buyer that will be willing to pay us ten grand for it. We assigned that lease from us to them. So now it's a second document. We assigned it. So we have the leases. I mean, the option is there. Mm -hmm. Everything we agreed to the seller is on that piece of paper. When we find our buyer, we're giving him that same piece of paper. So he sees what we paid. Mm -hmm. And he gives us, and then we assign it to him. And when he gives us uh, 10 grand, we give him the assignment. And he is now in control of that option. Now, before we end off, so that makes sense, right? So we're buying and selling mm -hmm. a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. So what is the problem with, with why people don't do this? I don't understand. What is the fear? <laughs> what is the animosity? I, I don't get it. You know, but I've thought about it because I've been in the middle between you and the people and doing some of these myself. Um, and having an option, now this is the first option I've done. I've done a lot of other, a few other types of deals. I don't say a lot, but a few other types and it's given me, like, I don't worry at night. Like, I sell it or I don't sell it. I paid $100. I right. put a little time, a little paint and some effort, but not a big deal. Um, the only thing to worry about is, gee, I might not make money. And you might lose something you hope to get. You might fail to accomplish something. That's it. So and that's ego. like, and no, it's not even ego. It's just, I want to make some money. It's not an ego thing. It's just like, I want to make some money. I hope I manage. If not, eh. An opportunity went by. And that's the worst of it. So it's not fear like something bad will happen. It's like disappointment that you might not accomplish something. But you know what? In my situation, the market actually changed right under my feet. You know how things shift around. The, the, the price online went down about $6,000. Sellers kind of dried up a little bit or whatever. But it's fine because I only paid the $100 and a little effort, a few hundred dollars here and there. So it's not a fear thing, but a more disappointment if you don't make the money. But there's no fear in it, so it's okay. I learned so much to do this. I found out how to get the house on the MLS for $99 with no realtor. I learned a lot from this. Right. So it's totally fine. It's just some disappointment that you don't accomplish something. So let me see if I get this straight, Peter. You're saying that you paid $100 for this deal to get a, probably about a $10,000 education. Yeah. Because if you went and paid somebody for coaching, it'd be probably at least 10 grand, right? There, yeah. And there's stuff you can't learn by paying. You have to right. be there and go through it. Right. You know, and I've paid more than that for church donations or go on vacation or just blow money on something I don't need. I'd buy another guitar. Uh, it was so worth it to me, you right. know? Agreed. And I, and I keep right. seeing what I can't accomplish with these things. I mean, you, you've told me several times the house looked like a piece of crap when I started. In, in, three, in two weeks, it was like, holy crap, this looks... I got compliments how nice it was compared to, oh, my God, I show you pictures how it was before. In two weeks, boom, right. looked right. pretty. Anyways, so don't, you don't have to fear if you use options. You might have some disappointments if you don't make a big money. That's the worst of it. 
But right. most of the time, you will. Buy right. five of these, you'll win four out of five times. It's not five out of five times. Right. Do it. I agree. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, now, before we end off, I want to cover the $10,000 down payment thing that confuses a lot of folks. Oh. What's the I get a lot of I get a lot of support tickets. So, mm. like, they think that because they put the ten thousand dollars down now, they need more money two years from now to close with. Oh, I see. So okay. Be, so here's what happens: because you're using an option agreement, mm -hmm. and you're a part owner, you can do this without a license, as I said, legally. Yeah, yeah. Real realtors don't like it. And we'll spout that it's illegal, but it's not true. Number one. Number two, the ten grand is at first option consideration money. Mm -hmm. Until the buyer triggers the option and says they want to buy. Right. So they give you ten thousand dollars, and that ten thousand dollars is placed against the option agreement. The mm -hmm. option agreement says that you had the right to buy or sell this property and you're not obligated to do it. So you can walk away. Mm -hmm. But it's non-refundable money. If they walk right. away, they lose the ten grand. So the yeah. only place that the $10,000 shows up is uh, at the closing. Right. They don't get it back. And they know that before they go in. Right? So here's what happens. They have an option agreement. We'll say 18 months in, they have to, the option tells you, the option agreement tells you that you have to send, like suppose I'm the person, you're the person, you're the buyer, I'm the seller. Yeah. You have to send me something in writing saying, I want to execute my option. Mm -hmm. I want to buy the property. Yep. So you have to send me something in writing so it all stays legal, mm -hmm. right? Nowadays, we consider text and email. It used to be in my day. I would give people, when I give them an option, I would give them a letter and say, just sign it and mail it to me. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, here's what happens. As soon as you send me the letter <clears throat> saying you want to execute your option agreement, I am going to draft or write up a purchase and sales agreement. A purchase and sales agreement is a roadmap for the closing, which, by mm -hmm. the way, the definition of a closing is deed changes names. Right. So the purchase and sales agreement is the roadmap of how we're going to conduct this transaction to get to the point of deed changes names. Boy, that's really, really clear when you put it like that. That's good. Right. So the purchase and sales contract explains what everybody needs to do and it talks about the money the inspections it talks about your rights it talks about default it talks about if you back out who keeps the deposit yeah all how that long stuff. all how the long? timing yeah. when everything happens two weeks later then four weeks later then by this time yeah most of the time it's uh, purchase and sales contracts are not written for more than 45 days most mm -hmm. of the time they can be but most of the time they are now here's what happens the $10,000 that was option consideration deposit gets placed on the purchase and sales agreement and it goes to a deposit. Yep. So it goes from option consideration money to the purchase and sales contract, which is a deposit. So mm -hmm. if they pay 200, they only owe 190 and it represents that way itself that way on the purchase and sales contract. Wait a minute, back up. So let's say the house you you bought it for two hundred and they they purchased it for two ten, right? Okay, yep. So, I changed the numbers, yeah. Okay, so and that's just to follow the original scenario. So in that scenario, uh, they say the, to the bank so, they bought so the, the house ten, for so, no. So hang on. So you're skipping yeah. a step. So well, so they gave me ten thousand dollars to have the right to buy. Yeah. Now they're buying, so the purchase and sales contract that ten grand goes on the purchase and sales contract, saying I already gave them ten grand. Right, and the price is two ten, right? Right. So out of the two ten, they gave ten. So the bank thinks, okay, it's two ten, and they gave ten. Right. So they can see that because if you said it was two hundred thousand, they still owe two hundred thousand. There would be no deposit. So right. the two ten reflects the ten down, leaving right. two hundred. 
and all you good. need all you need to do to make your life easier is to record the ten thousand dollar payment i did it i've done it for many years with a certified check I take pictures of the check i actually take pictures of the deposit that i make and i give it to the bank nowadays mm -hmm. you can do that with electronic mechanisms you know what i mean uh, but the point is is that when i do the transaction <clears throat> i record <coughs> excuse me <coughs> i record or document they gave me the 10 grand right because the, the the bank wants to know that and you and the seller and the buyer everybody needs to have that so the deal goes through the bank has to know that or they wouldn't like it so it's important to have a document to prove it so the point or the moral of the story is is it's the same money two different names mm -hmm. two different documents mm -hmm. there is nothing that the bank the bank the bank does not care when the money was received that's the misconception like for example suppose suppose i had a rent to own with you and mm -hmm. you were applying two hundred dollars a month to my to my down payment money right every month two hundred dollars went to uh additional toward the down payment right and that's two that's twenty four thousand twenty four hundred dollars a year right mm-hmm so suppose I went 10 years giving you that money, I would have paid $24,000, right? Sure. So I, a 10 years later, I can get a mortgage and that $24,000 would be applied to my down payment. Well, think of it in car leasing. You put two, $3,000 on the car lease, you pay all that money every month, and at the end of two, three years, you go, never mind, I don't want the car. It's gone. Right. Right. The deposit money's gone. Right. But like my son just hold on to his lease because the prices got so high for cars, it's screwed, I'm keeping it. So now the down payment money that he paid went towards the car because right. he because he bought it. Same deal, right? right? Exactly right. Cool. So even if you collected the ten grand in two years ago, you collected the ten grand two years ago, the bank will still still allow it. So there is no confusion with the ten grand and having to do a mortgage over again and all that. Good. So just make sure you have evidence or proof that the buyer gave you the money and you're fine. Mm-hmm. Okay. By the way. Your seller and your buyer knows all this because you're totally transparent when you do this deal. No, they have to expect us. We're going to make some money. We're not doing this for charity. Yikes. Right. So plus, plus well, not only that, but on a $200,000 house, $10,000 for, for your time is a lot cheaper than if the realtor did it. Because mm -hmm. even if it's 10%, that's 20 grand. Yeah. And oh yeah, by the way, the biggest benefit that we have to our seller is when a seller uses a realtor, they pay the selling costs. Mm -hmm. When they do it with us, the buyer pays the selling cost, not the seller. Hmm. It's a huge benefit. Yep. Right, because the seller, the seller's allowing a time delayed or a, a, a cash out delayed sale. They should get something for it, and what they're getting for it is is the savings of all the fees, which is thousands and thousands of dollars in any transaction. Mm -hmm. And vice versa, the buyer, because you're getting the opportunity, uh, just have to agree. We just we just built it into the arrangement that they pay the costs as part right. of the. Uh, and I've had a lot of questions about like, well, how do you do that? Well, the way you do that is is that first of all, you reduce the fees drastically because you're doing the work instead of the realtor. Mm -hmm. Instead of the banker, instead of all those other people that are grabbing fees, because in the realtor system we called it the real estate mafia, like episode ninety, I think it was, right? The real, yeah. so we should do that again. The real estate mafia, yes. right? And, and and basically what happens is is you're going to have in the transaction you have a banker, you have a realtor, you have an insurance guy, you have a title guy. All those people are fee based professionals. Mm -hmm. You're becoming the fee based professionals and getting all that money for doing it. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, we get we get our buyers to pay it all only because until they found us, uh, they did not uh, they did not qualify to buy a house. And are willing to pay extra for having the, the colorful for having a colorful financial past. Mm -hmm. Right. It's the American way, I guess. Right. Happens, and these aren't bad people. I mean, no. a lot of reasons that you can't get a mortgage. Well, there's right a lot now. of things like divorces, and you know, and 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 like job transfers. I mean, COVID was a perfect example of that. You know, a lot of people, you know, lost their jobs because of COVID, or they weren't working, and 
you know. But you had a guy that had a, big, a bad uh, skiing accident, wrecked his leg or something, and yeah. he couldn't work for months. You know, yeah. th things happen. Yeah. Okay, cool. But this so, is a way to get out of that stuff, you know, help people. So hopefully that helped uh, our rookies and, and, and kind of open your eyes up. Uh, I, I hope that you see that it's not as risky as you think. The only thing that's holding you back is you calling a seller. The only thing that's holding you back. You need to call a seller. And we have lots of material on that. And, uh, and or you can get involved with Creative REI Reply. Just type in Creative REI Reply into Google. You'll find it. And it does all the work for you. So you could do it that way too. All right, good. So please, 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 please make sure you leave us, uh, subscribe to our channel wherever you're listening to us, whether it's on podcast or YouTube or Facebook or Twitter or wherever you are. Uh, subscribe to us. Leave us a comment if you could. Uh, also, make sure that you go to the description and find the link because there's a free link in there for you that will help you do all of this. Um, I think I put, uh, I don't remember because I did it a few weeks ago, but I think I put, I have a 10-part series that actually shows you how to do all this step by step. Even gives you the paperwork for the deals. So there you go. Uh, I have a way that if you're worried about it, for $25 a month, you can get a lawyer in your backyard that will help you review your documents before you use them. That's pretty special. Okay. That's really so, good. Yeah. So uh, hopefully uh, we've helped you untangle some things in your mind today. And uh, you can get going and start doing some deals. Uh, I will tell you that I am, uh, I am in a tizzy in my own mind. And I expect soon that what I'm going to come out with is I'm going to come out with the 2023 wealth formula. And I'm still working on it, but it's going to be, I think it's going to be a weekend class. You know, like a couple hours on a Saturday, a couple hours on a Sunday. Uh, I'm still working on it, but the point is, is that with the market changing from sellers to buyers, it's an it's an epic time to do this because it's like it's kind of like appreciation in a deal, you know, because like you buy for a hundred, tomorrow it's worth one ten, next week it's worth one twenty, you know, and you're not doing anything, you just happen to be in the right place at the right time. That's what this new 2023 wealth formula is going to be, is to show you how to get in that path of progress so you can almost make money accidentally because it's coming. It's here. It's not coming. It's here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mainstream, mainstream to you. I turned on the news this morning to watch the, to watch the weather, and the main headline was how interest rates are up 7.2%. And mortgage, mortgage, mortgages are down forty-two or forty-eight yeah. percent, and 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 it's happening. So if you get involved with some of the things we're talking about for not a lot of money, you could like make yourself wealthy almost by accident. Ahead of the curve, this is how you get into it. Yep. Not after the fact. Yep. So, All right. so, hey, count me in. Yeah. All right. Cool. So uh, thank you for listening to us. Uh, next week's podcast, or as we call it, next podcast, which is episode number 328, is called Three Great Rookie Conflicts and Creative Real Estate Today. And you are going to be amazed. at what I, This podcast probably took me four hours to write it. They normally take me an hour and a half. Seriously? Yeah. That's where you were yesterday. Yeah. All right, cool. So make sure you join us for episode number 328. Thank you for all the support. Don't forget to give us a like or a, a, a hooray or a, a thumbs up or thumbs down, whatever it may be. And uh, flourish and prosper, man. Over and out. Thanks for tuning in to the hottest real estate topics on the planet with Bill and Pete. If you want to continue learning how to buy and sell real estate without money or credit, head over to FlippingHouses.club for some cutting-edge real estate wealth tools. Or contact us at info at FlippingHouses.club.